What's up everybody and welcome to episode 18 of my vlog. It's a cold rainy day in November. Generally in this vlog we talk about poker, we show poker, we play poker, etc. But today we're doing something a little bit different. As I mentioned in my previous video, I'm doing a three-day hike in Big Bend National Park in West Texas. So what I want to do is break down a couple of the details about the hike and I want to go over my gear selection for the trip. People like to use the term ultralight backpacking a lot and usually they like to say that it means that you have a base weight of under 10 pounds which is your total weight of everything you're carrying minus your food, your water, your worn clothes and your fuel. For me it's kind of an arbitrary number. I believe in a minimalist philosophy when it comes to backpacking and I try to use that when I create my gear list and buy my gear. Whether or not that puts me under 10 pounds or not is not something that I'm necessarily concerned with. Generally, I probably am under 10 pounds with a base weight, but for this upcoming trip, it's gonna be a little bit chillier. I'm also bringing my camera so that I can film this vlog. So it looks like my base weight's gonna be around 10.5 pounds or so. And we're gonna break that down, go over everything that I'm bringing and why. But before we do that, let's do some rock climbing. And by rock climbing, I mean indoor climbing because it's Houston and we don't actually have rocks that you can climb. Big Bend is a park unlike any other. With its isolated location along the Mexican border, its breathtaking 100 mile vistas from the top of the Chisos Mountains, its deep, narrow river canyons, and its vast, empty desert country. However, as with any park, there are always a few visitors who fail to respect the park or use common sense in their visit and so give the rangers job security. The job of the ranger is to protect the park from the people and the people from the park. This is a pretty interesting book called Death in Big Ben. I would highly recommend it if you are into national parks and the history of them. This one goes back to about 1980 and it discusses all of the unfortunate incidents that have occurred in Big Ben since then. My wife was not too thrilled that I was reading this book in the past couple weeks. She would be laying in bed next to me as I read it and I could see that it made her nervous just thinking about the fact that I was heading out to Big Ben and here I am reading a book about how dangerous the park is. The truth is, the park is of course somewhat dangerous uh, depending on the time of year, but that's just because it is a desert, there's not a lot of water, it can get really hot, uh, it can also have some pretty inclement cold weather as well that kind of comes out of the blue. And it's very, very empty and large. So if you're way out in the back country and you get lost or you have an accident, it's going to be very difficult for someone to find you and rescue you or for you to get yourself out of the situation. However, 
I've definitely done everything that I can to prepare for this trip and the risk is probably fairly minimal. We've got GPS, and we have maps. I'm going with a friend who's done this exact trail before. We're not doing any bushwhacking, going to any of the rarely visited areas of the park. We're doing the Outer Mountain Loop, which is not the most traveled part of the park, but it is common amongst long distance backpackers. One thing you can do is to make sure that you have the proper gear to ensure your safety. If something goes wrong, if the weather gets colder, if you are exposed to the sun for long periods. So that's a good segue into talking about the gear that I'm bringing for my hike. All right, so this is gonna be a fairly brief rundown of what I will be carrying the entire time during my Big Bend through hike. The first item is a seven foot by nine foot Z-Pax tarp. This is an ultra light tarp made out of Dyneema Cuban fiber, colloquially known as Cuban fiber. This material is one of the strongest materials on the planet, which means it can be made extra, extra thin to create an ultra light material which is also very heavy duty. It's not quite as durable as some other fabric options that you could use for a tarp, but this thing only weighs about six ounces. I don't plan to use the tarp very much. The weather is looking to be pretty awesome. Doesn't seem like there's gonna be any rain. So if the weather looks good, I'll probably just keep the tarp in my bag and cowboy camp on the ground. If I do set it up, I tend to like to set it up in an A-frame type of setup, which allows me to sit up if I want to. Uh, it also protects me from some mild rain and wind. There's other setups that I can use if the weather is worse. Next up in my sleep system is my sleeping pad. It's a Nemo Tensor Insulated. I'm a side sleeper, so I get the wide version. That way I can lay on my side comfortably. This pad's a little heavier than some of the options uh, that you can use to sleep on, but for me, it is super, super comfortable. It is super warm, and a good night's sleep is something that I really wanna have when I'm out hiking long miles, and this thing just does it for me. Uh, there's a pump sack that goes with it. It's something that you don't have to bring. It's an extra two ounces. It makes blowing it up a lot easier, but it's also good for the longevity of the pad because you're not blowing moisture into the pad, which can cause mildew. I have a Polycro ground sheet, just a very, very thin uh, plastic sheet that I put down on the ground to put my pad on top of. This is just to keep my pad dry and free of debris. Next is a Z-Pax Dyneema Cuban Fiber dry bag. This is what I keep my quilt. My quilt is a 20 degree quilt. It's made by Underground Quilts. This one is the Bandit XL model. Again, I get it in wide because I'm a side sleeper and I need a little bit more width with my quilt. If you've never used a quilt before, a quilt is like a sleeping bag, except it doesn't have a hood and it doesn't go all the way up in the back because your pad is actually insulated and when you lay on a down sleeping bag, you smash the down and it really does nothing for warmth anyways. So it's just lighter to not have that material at all and to use your pad for what it's there for. Um, the bottom, sometimes they have sewn in toe boxes. My toe box is actually just a zip up so I can unfurl it out like a blanket if I want or I can have my, you know, my feet and legs tightly wrapped. And then it has straps on the sides which connect with a little piece of cord that goes underneath your pad to kind of tuck the quilt around your pad and make sure you don't get any drafts. Uh, next up is my stakes. I carry two titanium V stakes and six uh, carbon stakes. The V stakes are a little bit stronger and I use them for the ridge line of my tarp. The carbon stakes are for the rest of my tie outs. My poles are carbon fiber also. They're made by Black Diamond. They have cork handles, which I tend to like because when you sweat or something like that, they kind of handle the moisture better than the rubber handles. And then they're fully adjustable. This allows me to adjust them on an incline or a decline and also to adjust how I use my poles to set up my tarp, which different setups require different heights of the poles. Um, I'm a bit of a diva when it comes to pillows. I bring two pillows. They're both fairly minimal. 
neither one weighs very much at all, but it helps me to prop myself up. And like I said, I'm a side sleeper and I kind of have to sleep at a 45 degree angle or I just don't get good sleep. So I suck it up and I bring two pillows. Next up are my shoes. They are Brooks Cascadia Trail Runners and they're made with Gore-Tex so they're waterproof. In hindsight, I don't think I would buy these shoes again. These Gore-Tex shoes, they don't breathe very well in the summer and if you do get them wet, it's kind of a pain in the butt because they don't dry very quickly. The pants I wear are made by a company called Prana. Um, these are the pants that I also wear when I rock climb. They're really breathable, really comfortable. In Big Ben, there's a lot of things that are going to try to scratch you and poke you on the trail. So I think it's important to have long pants. The shirt I'll be wearing is a long sleeve Outdoor Research Astroman shirt. This is a 50 uh, SPF shirt. It's very light material. Um, I almost wouldn't recommend this as sort of a winter or shoulder season shirt because it's so thin, but since we're going to be in direct sunlight a lot of the time, I think it'll be warm enough to where this is okay. I can always put on some of my other layers if I'm chilly. I'm also bringing a pair of sun gloves. When we're in the desert, there's no coverage, no shade, so you'd be surprised your hands will typically end up burnt if you don't either put sunblock on them or gloves. I've got a buff. It's uh, something to keep the sun off my neck. I also can use it to keep the sun off my face. I can use it as a beanie at night, put it over my ears if my ears are cold to keep my head warm. Also, it makes a handy pot holder as well. Boxers, these are ex officio very thin, breathable boxers that supposedly won't get stinky. Darn tough socks, these are my favorite socks to hike in. Um, they're pretty much indestructible, but if you do manage to mess up a pair, they have a lifetime warranty. So worth the little bit of extra that they cost in my opinion. Z-Pax waterproof gaiters. Um, I'm not sure if I really need these, but mainly I'm going to be wearing them to keep the sand dirt and rocks out of my shoes. Don't really know how to say the name of this company. Maybe it's Kuyu or Kuyu. I don't know, but they make some excellent fleece gear. It's a company that makes gears for hunters that are into ultralight gear. So this is a fleece hoodie. It's called the Peloton 97. It's a half zip, super light. I also have the Peloton zip up pants. These two things combined sort of make up uh, a base layer that I can either wear when I go to sleep or I can wear it under my other clothes if it gets really cold. The pants are nice, they, they have a little velcro on the side and they zip up along the leg so that if you have them on in the morning and you're hiking it's a little chilly, then you start to get warm, you can just drop your pants, zip them off and you don't have to take your shoes off. Likewise, you could easily put them on if you needed to without taking your shoes off. I also have the same company's gloves uh, again, fleece gloves. They've got some nice little pads on the thumb and finger that allow you to use your phone. So if you're doing GPS or whatever. My puffy jacket is a Feathered Friends EOS jacket. This is one of the best jackets on the market as far as the amount of warmth for the ounces that it is. Very lightweight. It also feels very warm. It has pockets that zip up, it has a hoodie, and it also has a drawstring around the bottom so that you can tighten it up to protect yourself from drafts. My rain jacket is an Outdoor Research Helium 2. This is a very popular rain jacket amongst ultralight hikers. Um, this jacket performs very well. The only knock on it is it doesn't have any ventilation really, so you may get a little warm if the temperatures are enough to make you sweat while it's raining. Got my cook set, which is a titanium pot. I've got a titanium long spoon. I find these handy if you're buying backpacker meals. They're usually in long bags and you cook them inside the bag and these will reach down in and scoop the food up. Um, my stove is a BRS stove, which is a very, very minimal, I don't know, I think it may be aluminum. It's very light. And then of course I have a canister of butane for my fuel. My pot is a 750 milliliter pot, so pretty decent size for just one person. If I was cooking meals for more than just one person, it would be a little small. Next up, I've got my ditty bag. It just has sort of like my personal hygiene stuff in it. I've got a travel toothbrush, 
travel toothpaste, hand sanitizer. I've got a stick of Joshua tree sunblock and also a opinal knife. Then I've got my poop kit. It's just uh, pretty basic, just, a, just an ultra light trowel and some toilet paper. Then I've got my first aid kit. It's got some just very basic first aid stuff in it like band-aids, Aquamira water treatment tablets, which is basically a backup water filtration system to my main system, which we'll get into that in a second. I've got some uh, anti-diarrheal medicine just in case and also a little vial that contains all the other medications that I might need like ibuprofen, antacids, and also my blood pressure medicine. Uh, I've got a pencil with some Luco tape wrapped around it. Luco tape is fantastic for dealing with blisters. It could also be used for other first aid applications in a pinch. I've got my baggie of electronics. I have a charger, I believe it's a 10,000 something watt. I don't know, it, it charges my phone probably three, four times. I've also got my headphones, so I'll be charging both of those. I find the headphones are crucial for me. Podcasts are make it easier to go to sleep sometimes, especially if it's raining. And also just for long walks, it's nice to have something to listen to. Got a couple of charger cables for my phone and my headphones. My uh, food storage system is a DCF food bag from Z-Pax. It's got a carabiner on it in case you need to hang it. Uh, we won't be needing to do that in Big Ben. There are bear boxes in the campsites. And then I've also got a couple of these OPSAC bags. Basically, they're just fancy Ziploc bags that are smell proof. This is just to put a layer between my food and my trash and any kind of animal that might smell those things. There are uh, bears, javelina, and mountain lions in Big Ben. So for my water filtration system, I have a Cenoc Vecto 2 liter bladder paired with a Sawyer Squeeze. This is a tried and true water filtration system. Many hikers use it, would highly recommend it. I keep this bag as my dirty bag, so I don't put clean water in it. I only put dirty water that needs to be filtered. Uh, speaking of filtering, I would filter into some of the containers I have. I've got a two liter ever new bladder and I also carry some smart water bottles. We've got a one and a half liter and a 700 liter bottle that I keep strapped to my chest. And that one has a sports cap. I find the sports cap is really handy because you can backwash your Sawyer filter if it gets some grit or some other things blocking it. I've also got a one ounce Z-Pack sit pad. This is my seat. I don't plan to do a lot of sitting, only when we're taking some rests during the hike, maybe to have lunch. Uh, once we get to camp, we'll most likely be turning in to sleep pretty early. My headlamp is a Nightcore NU25. Again, this is also a very popular headlamp amongst backpackers. It has a nylon, I think, cord strap. Thing is super light, works pretty well. It's also rechargeable, so it doesn't need to have batteries. You can just plug it into your charger and get another charge out of it. Uh, my camera setup, I've got a UL tripod, just a very basic tripod. It has some Velcro around it so that you can strap it to your trekking pole or strap it to a tree. My phone is a uh, Google Pixel 3. I'll probably be taking uh, pictures with my phone and using the GPS for directions. The camera I'm using is a Canon G7X Mark II. Um, it's a decent little camera, pretty small, but uh, functions pretty well. My backpack is a Mountain Laurel Designs Profit in DCF. This backpack weighs about a pound and it is pretty much waterproof. This is a frameless bag, so that means um, it's not going to be able to handle heavier loads. So it's definitely a bag that you would only want to use if the loads you are using are under about 25 pounds or less. There's a uh, strap pocket where I keep my camera and my tripod. There's a, another little pocket that holds my water bottle. I've added a chest strap on it for a little bit more support. And it has a hip belt, which a hip belt is not going to transfer as much weight as it will on a framed pack. But when you get that thing packed in really tight, 
um, it still manages to transfer some of it. I would say I hike about 50-50 with it without the hip belt. It has a roll top closure system. Uh, it's completely waterproof. It's seam sealed, buttons at the top, you roll it down, then you can tension it tighter with the buckles to get a more compact and easier to carry bag. There's a top strap. I like to sometimes fasten my poles or if I'm carrying a bag of dirty water, I'll fasten that to the top because I might not want that in my bag because I don't want dirty water bag to rip open and spill over my stuff. So as far as uh, food goes, I really enjoy uh, this company Packet Gourmet. They're out of Austin, Texas. Um, they're kind of a newer company, but I would say compared to some of the more popular hiker meals, like such as the Mountain House meals, that these meals are probably a step above that. Um, everything that I've had by them is pretty good. So that's gonna actually be the majority of the food I bring. I'm also going to bring Bobo's bars, which are some of my favorites, and some nut butters. One of these pouches is 800 calories. So lots of calories for the weight, which is always really good. We're gonna be doing a lot of strenuous hiking. We're gonna to need to eat a lot of calories, yet I don't wanna carry a ton of weight. So I've tried to keep the food as calorie dense as possible. I'm also probably gonna bring some pepperoni and some kind of trail mix or something like that. Also, uh, one thing that's really important on a hike like this where there's not a lot of water, as you can see, I did bring my filter along and there are some spots where there might be water, but the water is not always guaranteed in Big Ben. That's one of the big uh, reasons why there's been some tragedies there in the past. People go out in the desert and they don't realize that they need to carry all the water that they need. We're going to probably be able to get some water at some spots. Uh, there's a Big Ben chat forum that generally has good updates on whether water is available at sort of the typical sources, but we're not gonna take any risks. We are going to be carrying a lot of water, um, probably at least five to six liters each to start. And then at the end of day one, we will have cash water from the day before near our first night camp stop. So we'll be able to reload. Yeah, like I said, once we get closer to the day, we're going to look at all the water reports and make sure that we absolutely have enough water because if you're out there in the middle of the backcountry and you get severely dehydrated, it can be very, very scary and very life-threatening. So anybody who plans to hike in Big Bend or anywhere with a desert climate, always carry at least a gallon a day. Some people might even require more, just depends on your level of fitness and how much water you require. So that's gonna wrap it up for this uh, gear list. I hope that you found it informative and I'm really looking forward to the hike. It's four days away now and I'm super excited. Gonna make sure that I get this video out before we leave. That way, as soon as I get back, I can start editing those videos and get the actual hike vlogged. I appreciate anyone who is watching this content. I know normally this isn't the kind of content that I deliver and I hope that you found it entertaining and useful. If there's any of my gear that you have more questions about, feel free to ask me in comments. So thanks everybody. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I can't wait to bring you the details of my adventure.